Yeah, just a few weeks ago, I was in uh, Spain with our Word on Fire team filming for our series, and we went to some of the really great places in, uh, in Spain. We were allowed to film in the Prado, which is one of the great art museums in the world. We filmed some canvases by uh, Fra Angelico and Velasquez and others. We went to Avila, the hometown of St. Teresa, and saw the beautiful medieval wall, the great 12th century cathedral. We went to Segovia, to the tomb of St. John of the Cross. One of my favorite spots was Toledo, which has um, one of the really great cathedrals in Europe. We filmed at that beautiful golden Rarados that was built by the, uh, the kings and queens of Spain. And you know, what strikes you is to enter into Spanish culture is to be awash in a culture that is marked by the Catholic imagination. Well, about halfway through our trip, one of our team members turned to the sound man whom we hired for that day, and he was a man about 35 or so, a Spaniard. And we said, well, what do you make of all this splendor that we've been taking in and filming? And he said, well, you Americans are kind of a young culture, so you're still beguiled by all this. Uh, we've had a lot of religion, and we've kind of seen through it. Now we think of it as kind of a, a colorful toy that we take out and play with from time to time. <laughs> well, that line of his has just stayed in my mind. First of all, I mean, the condescension of it, you, you poor, naive Americans. But more to the point, the gross secularism that is evident in a statement like that, the sort of just bracketing of the religious dimension. And here's what strikes me. Go back to the 18th century, 19th century. You have a lot of critics of religion, but boy, did they take it seriously. You know, Kant and Nietzsche and Marx and many others, Freud, they went after religion with a lot of energy because they saw it as something very important, even though they were dismissing it. The attitude now, and, and this man's attitude, if the stats are right, is pretty common in Europe, strikes me as even more dangerous because it is so bland. The great questions, you know, about life, God, meaning, just kind of brushed aside as unimportant. What struck me, too, was how congruent that attitude is with many of the views I see on my YouTube forum. So I've done many videos on, uh, on culture, on religion, many on God and the new atheism, and people respond, you know, often very critically. But what strikes me is this attitude of, who knows? Where's the universe come from? Uh, the things that religion describes. Ultimate meaning. <sighs> Yawn. Who knows? Who cares? Let's just move on. That kind of, oh, well, I could care less sort of secularism. Not a hostility to religion so much, but just a bracketing of religion. See, and again, I think that is a more pernicious and more dangerous attitude. Not just for the church, though it's somewhat dangerous for the church. It's dangerous for those who hold it. See, and here's why. Like it or not, we are wired for God. I know I've said that before, but it bears repeating because we are hardwired for fulfillment. And that means ultimate truth. It means the truth itself. That's what we want. It means the beautiful itself. That's what we want. It means goodness itself. We're hardwired for this fulfillment. When you shut that dimension down and you say, who knows, who cares? You are doing damage, whether you know it or not immediately, you're doing damage to your own soul. Now see here, I'll appeal to Freud, who saw something that's really right, I think. Namely, that repressed feelings don't go away, they go underground, and they come up usually in some twisted or dangerous way. Now we all know that. The same is true, see, of our deepest religious feelings and religious impulses. If I just say, huh, who cares? turn away from those questions, they don't go away. They go underground, and they will come up because nature has its revenge. They will come up in some distorted way. Now, there are a lot of uh, versions of that. I think the most uh, uh, telling is addiction. We're wired for God. We all know that. You bracket God, you're going to choose some substitute. You just will. Now, pleasure becomes your God. Liquor becomes your God. Sex becomes your God. Power becomes your God. Whatever it is, you take some finite thing and you say, that's the satisfaction of my ultimate desire. It won't work. It can't work. And that's precisely why we become so obsessed with these things. We focus on them. We center around them. If I just get more alcohol, I get more pleasure, I get more power, I'll be satisfied. And of course, we won't. And that's the tragedy of it. The bottom line is this. 
To treat religion as a toy, as our sound man in Spain suggested, is not only intellectually irresponsible, it's a recipe for disaster at the level of the soul.